The needle holder is a ring instrument. The way to hold it is to put your thumb and ring finger through the rings. Your middle finger and index fingers serve to steady the instrument. For beginners, you will find that it is easier to release the ratchet mechanism of the needle holder this way. However, you may find a slight restriction in the rotatory movement of the needle holder when you suture. If you are new to suturing, you may find this the easiest to start with. The other way is to hold it in this fashion, without your fingers in the rings, the palm grip. This gives you the greatest mobility, but you may initially find it a bit difficult to disengage the ratchet. It also allows you to rotate the needle holder in your hand so as to reorientate the direction of the needle point. You will see this useful maneuver performed in the section on suturing. A compromise is to hold it this way, with just your ring finger in the ring. Master one technique first before going on to the next. These are tissue forceps. They may either be toothed to aid in holding tough tissues such as skin or blunt to hold more delicate tissues such as the bowel wall. The proper way to hold a forceps is like holding a pencil. Do not hold it in this fashion. That's for stabbing your enemy. To load a needle onto the needle holder, hold the needle with the tip of the needle holder from about one-third of the way from the suture end. When encountering tougher tissues, you may load the needle more towards the tip, about halfway along the needle. Do not load the needle too near the suture end. At this position, the needle will bend when you drive the needle through the tissues. One last point. Avoid holding the needle with your fingers. This is to avoid accidental needle stick injuries to yourself. Use your forceps instead. Picking up the needle with your fingers can be a difficult habit to break. In this segment, we take a look at the simple interrupted suturing technique. Start on the side of the wound furthest from you so that you are suturing towards yourself. Hold up one edge of the wound with a tooth forceps. The point of the needle enters the skin at right angle at an appropriate distance from the wound edge. This would depend on your needle size and the tissues you are suturing. Drive the needle through by a rotatory movement of the needle holder, recreating the arc of a circle. If the wound edges are close together, you can drive the needle across both sides of the wound. Otherwise, you may find it more accurate to re-grasp your needle before placing the suture on the other side of the wound. Pull on the suture, leaving a convenient length at the tail end of the suture. This length will depend on whether you intend to use a hand tie or an instrument tie. Tie a knot to one side of the wound, rather than placing the knot directly over the wound. Take care to just approximate the wound edges and not strangle it the tissues. Hold the sutures together in this fashion, and your assistant will cut it for you. Cut suture to an appropriate length. Too short, and there is a danger of the knot slipping. Too long, and it comes in the way of the next suture. Note the rotatory movement of the needle holder by a pronation to supination movement of the hand. Try to place your sutures evenly from each other and equidistance from the wound edge. Look again at the direction in which the needle enters the skin. Entering the skin at right angles help to avert the wound edges. Observe how the needle is pulled out along the direction of its curve, which forms the arc of a circle.
The simple interrupted suture is the easiest to perform and can be used for most skin suturing. Should the wound become infected, a few sutures can be removed without disrupting the entire closure. There are two types of mattress sutures, the vertical and the horizontal. We will start off with a vertical mattress suture. Take a bite a distance away from the wound edge. Follow through on the curve of the needle. Regrasp and take a second bite on the opposite edge of the wound an equal distance away. Grasp the needle. Reorient the direction of the needle in the needle holder to face the opposite way. Place the second set of sutures 2 to 3 mm away from the wound edge, keeping parallel and just below the surface of the wound. Tie a knot and your assistant will help cut the ends of the suture. Let's take a look again at the placement of the suture, paying close attention this time to how the needle direction is reoriented with the use of your forceps and needle holder, rather than handling the needle with your fingers. This involves a combined rotatory movement of both wrists. And you are now ready to place the second set of sutures. You may find it more convenient to hold the needle holder in the palm grip fashion when placing the second set of sutures. Let's look at the reorientation of the needle from another view. Needle holder and forceps hold the needle. Combined rotatory movement of both wrists simultaneously. And needle is now facing the opposite direction. In a wound where the wound edges are wider apart and deeper, the vertical mattress suture helps to evert the skin edges nicely. Let's now take a look at the horizontal mattress suture. The first pass of the suture is similar to that of the vertical mattress suture. Rotate your needle to face the opposite direction. For the second pass, place the suture a distance away from where you had just exit the needle, parallel and equidistance from the wound. Drive your needle through and tie a knot. Cut the ends of the suture and place the next set of sutures. Place each stitch precisely, taking symmetrical bites on each side of the wound. The mattress suture is more often used for deeper structures such as the fascia.